a bleak January day on the Kent coast. The temptation to turn up the thermostat is strong. But householders here fear they'll pay the price for keeping warm this winter when bills go up in the spring. A little nervous, wondering what they're likely to go to. I mean, the figures that are being quoted are pretty astronomical. Yeah, I'm very worried about it. I can't afford what they're charging me for right now. I think everything has to be looked at, not just the, the, green, the green tax, but maybe the VAT that's on the bills as well. There is, there's a combination of things. Certainly the green tax is one thing that may be perhaps should be postponed. Conservative backbenchers are acting on their constituents' concerns about a rise in the energy price cap, soaring inflation and a hike in national insurance to pay for health and social care. South Thanet MP Craig McKinley doesn't mince his words. Well, we haven't even begun to see the real costs of some of the net zero ambitions. You know, literally trillions of pounds. Nobody quite knows where it's going to be paid from. None of this has really been thought about very clearly. And the costs are truly, truly eye-watering uh, into the trillions. And government energy policies covering environmental measures and help for vulnerable people account for a significant portion of the average bill. Around 15%, according to the energy regulator. Boris Johnson is under pressure to cut VAT on energy bills after his Brexit boast of taking back control. At Prime Minister's questions earlier this week, Labour challenged the government on the issue. Even the Tory backbenchers have finally accepted Labour's call to cut VAT on energy bills. So will he finally stand up to his Chancellor and do the same? With the COP26 climate summit a distant memory for some, other Conservatives want to remind the government of its green commitments. Longer term, the, the challenge is to get away from gas altogether for heating and for power. We're very dependent on it, um, particularly for heating, but also, say, for electricity generation. And so the government's net zero strategy, I think, is, is absolutely right. Moving towards cleaner energy sources, insulating our homes, moving towards heat pumps um, is, is the right long-term strategy. It will make uh, future shocks like this less, less severe for the UK. Boris Johnson told leaders at COP26 the world was at one minute to midnight on global warming. And the negotiations are getting tough. But at the 11th hour, after repeatedly watering down his own government's environmental promises, will he once again succumb to political expediency? Well, Conservative splits on how to tackle energy costs have been laid bare after the former energy minister, Chris Skidmore, launched what he's calling a net zero support group to fight back against the Conservatives lobbying to remove green levies from household bills. He's been telling me he'd rather see the energy giants taxed. Well, two years ago, I was the energy minister that signed net zero into law. And several months later, we had a general election in which net zero was a core commitment for the Conservative Party in their manifesto. Uh, but since then, you know, I've been concerned to see in the press, obviously, a, a number of stories featuring some of my colleagues uh, claiming to have set up a net zero scrutiny group. And I, I wouldn't want to be watching Channel 4 News and, and turning on to find uh, colleagues representing the Conservative Party uh, talking down net zero without sort of deciding to set up my own group uh, and demonstrating what I believe is a wealth of support for net zero as a policy uh, within the Conservative Parliamentary Party. Do you think uh, your opponents, your colleagues on the backbenches, have got the Chancellor's ear on this, though? Well, let's just say my, my colleagues who are concerned about net zero, I appreciate their concerns. I appreciate that they are um, focusing on cost of living and, you know, it's right that they have those concerns, but what is important is that we're also re representing a population that is, is greatly concerned about the impacts of climate change and the long-term impact on the future well-being of our population. The current issues pressing on people's wallets are pretty dramatic, aren't they? When you look at the fact the average householder will pay nearly £2,000 a year on gas and electricity uh, if the price cap rises as expected. The levies will form, the green levies will form over £200 of that. There's a 1.25% hike in national insurance. There's an 8% inflation forecast next month. All of that taken together, I mean, how hard do you think that will hit your constituents, for example? Yeah, I mean, very hard. I mean, there's obviously greatly concerned about issues to do with uh, inflation and the cost of living. But this is, shouldn't be confused with the fact that we still need to take that action on climate change, on decarbonisation of the future, 
Otherwise, we're just simply back to square one. We've got poor housing, poor insulation, you know, poor building quality. All needs to be addressed if we're to be able to have more efficient forms of heating, electricity for the future. So would you advocate the Chancellor taking other measures to ease the cost of living for people, for example, reversing that national insurance rise or a windfall tax on you know, gas producers, which are making record profits at the moment? Yeah, I mean, a windfall tax, whether you call it that, whether you want to call it a carbon tax, something I would rather sort of talk about is how we achieve carbon taxation for the future is, is absolutely, I think, the right way to go. In, in terms of then, you know, looking at bills, obviously everything has to stack up in. So, you know, whether we are, you know, we've still got to fund the NHS, we've got to fund welfare. But what I would say is there are ways in which we can use green levies to help those most vulnerable and poorer households so that actually we should double the warm homes discount, for example, 500 million pounds, we should raise it to a billion pounds to actually encourage uh, fuel poor households to be able to invest in uh, new forms of green heating. Uh, we should look at insulation because we don't have a successful form of, of, of rolling out insulation to every household at the moment, which would reduce heating bills. And do you worry that because politics is inevitably quite short term, responding to pressures from voters, etc., you know, COP26 feels like a bit of a distant memory to a few of your colleagues and many in government? Well, I think I've heard a new phrase. I used to be able to say NIMBY is not in my backyard. I've heard a new phrase for when it comes to climate change called NIMTOs, not in my term of office. And I think this is you know, a real issue that you know, is there with the COP process. Politicians can make commitments and then you know, there's going to be 10 American presidential elections by the time we get to 2050. So how are we going to hold to account the politicians of today for the decisions and consequences of tomorrow is, I think, an international issue that we need to address uh, when it comes to looking at climate change. Chris Gidmore, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.